are hot. It's time to get your MMA fix, junkies. Take it away, Big John. Gorgeous George and Coach, are you ready? Junkie Nation, are you ready? Well, let's get it all. From the fight capital of the world, inside the beautiful Mandalay Bay Race and Sportsbook, you are listening to the MMA Junkie Radio Show, the only show that matters. I'm your host, Gorgeous George. With me, as always, is the devious and dastardly goes... Our East co-host, back East, producing Jumbo Josh. What's up? Hasn't it felt like a while since we've said Jumbo Josh? A little bit. I miss Jumbo Josh. Yeah, he's back. We have like a whole crew now. But watch, when I go, Josh, what do you think? They'll go, oh, he went to go escort somebody downstairs, or he went to go get a coffee. And no, he's the man tonight. One of the other numbskulls hanging back. He has the con. Oh, does he? Right, Josh? The con? Oh, there he is. See, that first shirt, you would have watched Crimson another Tide. half second. He wasn't going to be there. <laughs> if you would have watched Crimson Tide. You would have understood that. Listen, I'm just, I'm just still in a little bit of uh, disbelief that MMA tonight didn't spend two hours on Bagel Man. I'm not saying you guys. Should they would have. They would have if they could have. What happened? How long did they spend on him? Nah, you could just tell. Like, hey, I mean, come on, RJ Second. and Bagel Guy and Jimmy Smith. These guys could talk about that for four hours if they wanted to. Oh, okay. Um, did you guys see part two? No, nah, I still haven't seen part two. To Bagel Guy. So yeah. there's that incident where he has the meltdown and gets tackled because mm-hmm. he's kind of challenging everybody. I'm sure most of you know what we're talking about. It's been on Facebook and YouTube. It's gone viral. Just some guy with a short man's complex, I guess, just just had it. And he's going off on everybody at a bagel shop until finally one guy tells him, chill out. But, but in doing so, tackles him half a second later, subdues him. And I don't that, agree with that, by the way. We'll get into that later, but I don't agree with that. That's all I tactic. saw. And then, like, uh, 24 hours later, I think Fernanda or somebody, one one of the ladies that I follow on uh, Twitter, mm-hmm. said, check this out. Like, there was another angle. Um, <laughs> and it's kind of, well, it's not just another angle, but it's kind of like by then he's already gotten up. He's still walking around. A couple people are still poking at him, giggling. Mm-hmm. And, and then he's kind of escorted out. But but then today, talking with Josh and Goes, apparently like more people are digging into this guy, and I guess he's got his YouTube channel. Oh, dude, I went through that. Really? I clicked on maybe two or three of them, and then I just went, enough with him. And I heard either enter E tonight or somebody's already like sat down and had an exclusive. <sighs> God. So these are those 15 minutes they talk about, mm-hmm. and I guess he should enjoy them, but I I don't know about just lashing out at people. I mean for biting their lip or saying what they're saying. Now, I think now p- people are going to mess with them. You know what I mean? They're going to best mess with them. And I don't know if he, if he has any kids, but imagine their day at school. I don't this, think he this does. Week. No? No. Oh, okay. I know he talks about being on a dating site or something like that, but I know a lot of short dudes, and they're not as all worked up as he is. Mm-hmm. Whatever. But we can spend some time with it. If you want, goes since you said you have probed into the YouTube channel. Yeah, you want to jump into it now? Uh, no, not well. No. Uh, do you guys like? Is there a handoff between the other shows to, to what, this one? Is it a want, real high Josh? topic? Because what do you think? We have lots of time to relax today. We have one guest, Curtis Millinder, and I think we're gonna have four tomorrow. Four. So today's a good day to just hit a bunch of topics, have some fun. We can hit the pop culture if you guys want. We'll give out a few of the PFL results. The main card starting in about 25 minutes, by the way, on ESPN two. So uh, it's going to be a really, really fun show. And if you ever want to call in to the show, it's 877-FIGHT-93, 877-344-4893. Hit us up on Twitter, at MMA on SiriusXM. That works for our show and the other shows. So it's a good way to correspond with the hosts and the producers from Fight Nation Channel 156. But it seems like you guys are really, really uh, into this. All right, let's just jump into it. Okay. Here's what bothers me. Why does he say, let's take it outside? People who say that, basically what they mean is, let's not cause a ruckus in here. Let's take it out to the streets where it's louder. We don't have to worry about running into stuff. No, that means let's fight. Well, yeah, but you could just fight there, right? But people say, let's take it outside so that that, that you don't disrupt where where you're at. No, it's more of a threat. You're not even worried about what's happening Well, yeah, no, we get that it's a threat. But the reason they actually do it, instead of him just saying, let's take it outside and they fight, is because you don't want to 
You don't want to get in trouble where you're at. Like if you're at Sears or something, you don't want to break windows. You don't want to do that. I suppose if you break it down, yes. But I've never known really anyone to be too concerned about what may happen or something. Like well, I, that's what I'm tripping on. He's already created that crazy ruckus. Mm-hmm. Why does he care? Here's the other thing I don't understand. Well, what he wanted to do is scare the other guy and have that person just back off. Because he was saying, would you like to fight? Though? When has that ever worked for him? But anyway. I don't know. Maybe he's uh, Chad Mendez or something or <laughs> some little beast. The big guy. If Joseph Benavides told me that, I'd be like, nope, nope, we're okay. If I'm that big guy and he pisses me off, my opening move isn't to shoot on him. He's tiny. Why would I do that? that looks it was stupid. You know what it reminded me of? It was... <laughs> Didn't he almost like uh, it was one of those big guys, Earthquake or something? It was like the, that Avalanche movie, yeah, right? It, it was it, like it a blanket, like he was on fire or something. He just, he just dove, dove on him. him, yeah, he dove on him. But it why worked. is that your move? Uh, <laughs> like you have to get real low for a double. Um, and I suppose he didn't want to strike. I think he just wanted to subdue him, so he just tackled him. Mm-hmm. He probably felt like he probably felt like a defensive end. Those guys are about six six, two ninety going after one of those shorter quarterbacks like Doug Flutie, like I'm just going to swarm him. I think these are your options. You grab him by the scruff of his neck. This is if you're a really tall guy, Mm -hmm. right? Put him down on the ground. You pick him up and just throw him out, (laughs) right? Or you, this is Sparta him, and you kick him. But you don't dive (laughs) on him. That's just weird. That's not a good I, I haven't broken it down. I haven't broken it down. I'm sure Robin Black has, but I haven't broken it down. To see, I just saw the the finishing maneuver. Mm-hmm. Um, do you remember what I'm talking about? What, what, what were those yeah. guys called? I think the natural disasters. Called, uh, well, him and Typhoon. Was it called like an avalanche or something like that? Yeah. Was that move? You just smother the guy in the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, it, on the floor, it's the splash, right? Mm-hmm. Bundy used to do that. Yeah, it was kind of a mix of the avalanche and the splash. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that was kind of a I don't know. I thought that was kind of lame. And, and that guy, he's just, dude. He that guy's gonna have problems all his life. To put it in perspective. It depends if he can twist this. If he can figure out that he's being a douche and he can turn this into something. Like, what if this just turned into, like, a, some amazing podcast or something like that? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know the you guy. You can do a lot with 15 minutes. That's what I'm saying. A what lot. If, what if he can blow up his YouTube and he can just give his take and, you know, on, on certain things. But, yeah, you're right. I would say the odds are stacked against him and it ain't going to be too good for him going forward. Weren't we saying... That Snooky and the Jersey Shore, those guys, weren't we calling them 15 minutes? Yeah. It's been a lot more than 15 minutes. In oh, fact, today when I was at the gym. In fact, Snooky was like a meltdown in season one. Yeah. I said she almost she almost left, right? I saw her come out. I don't know what show it was, The View, or maybe one of those with Ryan Seacrest or something, but she's high-fiving people, so she's still there. Yeah. 15 minutes are not up, so she's who knows? She's got the most Instagram and Twitter followers out of the whole group. What do you she mean? wasn't the coolest in the uh, group. Yeah, everybody didn't take to her early on, but uh-huh. somehow she spun it around, and she became the most popular of the whole bunch. Mm-hmm. So she was able to turn the negative into a positive. Now, remember the other girl with the tra- trash bags, Angelina? Yeah. She wasn't able to do anything with, <laughs> with what bags. she did. Come on, man. If you're going to be – all right, I get it. If you go on a trip, you're just dumb. You bring trash bags. Maybe you get made fun of for like 20, 30 minutes. Then it's over, right? Yeah. But on national TV, you got to have a friend that has a bag, right? You can't be showing up on TV with trash bags like your ghetto Santa Claus or something. <laughs> it was the equivalent of, didn't, um, didn't uh, what was his name, Rabbit from 8 Mile? Didn't he, he have trash bags? I think so, when he, got, when he left the house, right? Yeah, he had, yeah, trash, he had trash bags, too. Bag. Huh. But see, he had it rough. Well, what would you and put I don't think them? Angelina had it rough, per se. Don't they break? Trash bags? Yeah, like you're worried about your own trash, let alone like having stuff, your stuff in there. Don't they break? Well, apparel, you know, like clothes is like foldable and all that. Uh, Even like, like a had, laundry bag would be box, better. Maybe with like the p- something pointy might rip through it. Yeah. But yeah, big mistake. But yeah, getting back to what, uh, what's this guy's name? Do bagel we know guy. His name? Uh, I don't know what his name is, but uh, I mean, people just call him Bagel Guy. Josh was able to track down his YouTube channel. You want to hear some audio from that? Dude, it's the worst. All right. All right, Josh, are you back? He is not back, but we have the audio over here. Mike right. Russo's got the, the con. Oh, okay. All right. So, Mike, why don't you play some stuff there? Well, do, do you know his name, Mike? I'm sorry? Do you know his name, the bagel guy? 
No, I think you guys are right. I think it's just Bagel Guy these days. Bagel Guy? All right, we'll go with Nagel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Bagel Guy, and uh, if, if you can play something from his YouTube channel, let's hear what he's got to say. Yeah, him. ragging on my height all day, you fuck fat you. fuck. Yeah, fuck you're big you. tough. Ragging on a fucking midget, right? You what? fat piece of shit. Really? She's going to make this shit up? You're a fuck. And you know what? All you girls go for the big bullies. You know what? Big tough guy ragging on me. Are you kidding me? Why would she make that shit up? Ask her. What did I say? I don't know what you said. I see her loud and day. What did I say? Now I'm getting serious. Anybody else want to rag on my height? She said you open your mouth and she opened his fucking mouth. Me? Yeah. There you all right. Go. That's him versus. Uh, He's, he must get his ass kicked fat all dude, the time, right? At a bar. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how big fat dude is, but give me fat dude. There's just no way the little guy is going to take him. He's way too small. Without knowing much about them, yeah, you always have to go with just the bigger dude. This but guy must get his ass kicked all. If, if you're, that's your shtick. Mm-hmm. The last place you want to have it is in New York. People are ready to fight left and right, dude, for nothing. Mm-hmm. You want to be that guy in California or Utah, <laughs> but you can't be doing that in New York. Yeah. The hell uh, with him. Do we have any more, Mike? Oh, and if, and if I agree, punch my side. That's okay. Get your food in what happened? What, what, I'm sorry. Get your food in You know what? Fuck you, fucking. Oh, there you go. Right. Right. She changed her tune fast, though. That was the aftermath of that was the yeah. first yeah. video. So that he, was the one I was describing. That chick had like a Woody Woodpecker type laugh. Yeah, but she changed her tune really quick. Did you see when he started coming back? She was like, ooh, she went towards the back. Yeah. But that was like uh, like Mickey Abbott, right, from Seinfeld. <laughs> that was his moment. <laughs> I'm yeah. standing for Punky Brewster back when y'all was nothing. Yeah, man, this dude's a trip. I don't know what's going to you know, come out of all this. And I, I don't know if he can figure it figure something out at the end of the day i don't think he's a good person usually i'm rooting for the 15 minute guy Mm -hmm. go get your your money whatever you know people are laughing at you you deserve something but this dude just come on man that could have been like your kid or my kid or our mom or something could have been there you know and that little ruckus could have hurt someone like the hell with this little twerp yeah i hear you all right let's take a quick break when we come back let's talk a little bit about women's mma because Tonight at PFL, Kayla Harrison, who's one of the big prospects in women's MMA, she, she fights in the lightweight division of the PFL. She has got to win, otherwise she won't advance to the playoffs. Only the top four of the eight women that are competing this season will uh, make it there. And there's just no way around it. There is no politics. It's a point system. And earlier on today's card, a couple of the other ladies have already made their way in, as well as Sarah Coffin, who didn't have to fight. She's already in. So three ladies are in. Kayla Harrison, with a win, is in. With a uh, loss, she is out. And then we'll talk about uh, some of the other big fights that have, have been happening and are upcoming here uh, in this summer. It's MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation, Channel 156.
MMA Junkie Radio. Now is the time to start preparing for fantasy football season by listening to Fantasy Sports Radio. Be a fantasy football champion by learning from the best analysts, including the guru, John Hansen, Pro Football Focus, and the football diehards. Here, player ranking strategies and pick-by-pick coverage of fantasy football expert drafts so you know how to build a winning team. It's Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio, Sirius 207 XM 87. All right, so talked about Kayla Harrison, and let's face it, let's be honest here, PFL did away with the middleweight division because they felt like they had more to gain by creating the women's lightweight division. And trust me, we've kind of gone through this with the UFC and the featherweight division. We're like, well, all right, you're kind of building around Cyborg, right? Because there's only 5 to 10 that I can think of off the top of my head, and there's not much more following. You don't, you don't have a division. What you have is a superstar, and that's fine. I get it. If you want to build around her, okay. Well, it just so happens that superstar lost to Amanda Nunes, and now it's... It's a division that still exists, but is on a little bit of a life support. Um, not to mention, it's just rare when a champion goes back and forth and defends both belts. That's what Amanda Nunes has set out to do. We'll see if that's what's next for her. Now, there is a big fight coming up there with Cyborg and Felicia Spencer. We'll more on that in a second. PFL said, we're going to go even a step further, and we're going to create the lightweight division. What they have is Kayla Harrison, who's a two-time gold medalist in judo for the United States. And... Very, very marketable young lady. Very, very skilled young lady. I mean, just totally reminds me of the, the same path, I guess, of, of a Ronda Rousey and what she did. So I get that. But when you look at the list of fighters, they're basically all fighters that pretty much have competed at featherweight and some at bantamweight. And the, re- the ones that have competed at featherweight could also make bantamweight. It's just that they chose to go in that direction. So it was almost like they forced a few of the ladies. Now, there's a couple of other ones that... Look like they're just lightweights. I get that. But now they're in a position here with where Kayla has to win tonight. Because otherwise she'll just be out. And I think that'll be a little bit of a disaster for them. A big disaster. Right. Exactly. Kayla's a minus 25-25 favorite here in Vegas. When do we ever say that? We get up to like 900 and 1,000 and go, whoa. I'm trying to think what the last one but was. But to go was over 1,000 is very rare. To go over 2,000 is extremely rare. This is over 2,500. That's why I made it a point to say 2,525 is what I saw. In fact, I should take a look one more time and see what it's at right now because mm-hmm. the fight isn't happening. She's in the co event spot, and the main card's starting in about 10 minutes on ESPN2. So we're still well, about an hour, hour and a half away from her fighting. Uh, however, what I've noticed is, think about what's happening with women's MMA. This is the summer women's MMA, starting with Jessica Andrade and that slam down in Rio de Janeiro in early May over Rose Namajunas. It was a great fight, one that you could go run it back if you want to, the rematch, because Rose had established herself as a star, and Jessica did the slam hurt around the world. Now, since then, uh, they went to Rose, and she said, no, I'm not ready yet. So we already have Jessica versus Weili Zhang happening in August. Then the next month, Valentina Shoshenko, the head kick heard around the world uh, versus Jessica I, you know, giving her her first title defense and just making her an even bigger star. Then we just recently had Amanda Nunes, an, uh, also a follow-up to what Valentina did, a head kick against Holly Holm, kind of reminding you of what Holly Holm did to Ronda in 2015. We got that fight coming up between Felicia Spencer and uh, Chris, Cyborg. Chris Cyborg. Valentina's already been rebooked. In fact, I think she's fighting before Wheelie Zhang and Jessica Andrade. Mm-hmm. So her turnout is that about her. even quicker than than Jessica Andrade's. And I'm not picking on either one or Jessica or anything. I'm just saying the ladies are staying busy. They're out there. They're headlining. They're providing highlights. Man, this is a huge, huge, not just year, but summer for Women's MMA. Yeah. I mean, going back to Kayla Harrison, I felt really bad the last time when she when she got her victory and she was crying. Like, I think most people wouldn't understand that. I didn't really understand it. And I'm like, come on, it's early in your career. You got a victory. You're going to come across these fights that are a little bit more challenging as you go further on in your career. But then I heard her response as to why she was crying. And she was saying, like, she strives to give the fans perfection and that perfection is what allowed her to win that gold medal and all that made sense the second she said that i was like okay i've seen people like this 
Mm -hmm. It may not be towards sports. It's maybe a different career, but I've seen people that are just driven that way. And how can you hate on someone? Okay, well, now, is that a little bit of what Ronda had? Yeah. So can the collapse be really bad but this on girl keeps it in check if she loses well that was a win though what if she loses no, no. but i mean with everything else though i mean she's still very polite to the fans right she's still giving interviews um now granted she's not making that the big money that ronda was making but she could very well get i, lo- there I love the quickly. intensity i really do but i think you have to compartmentalize when you can you know what i mean because i think we're just living in s- more stressful times right now man and people just they have these meltdowns, you know, uh, at the drop of a hat. And if that's what it, if that's what she experienced off of a win, I mean, people were standing up cheering for her. You know, they were giving her praise when they were interviewing her inside the Decagon. They still call it that, right? Mm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, she won. I mean, okay, Sarah Coffin's ahead on the bonus points because she got the finish and you didn't. Okay, but it's it's just the regular season. You know, you won. You won ten to seven. Think about football. You won ten to seven. Sarah Coffin won thirty five nothing. You know, so yeah, she's gonna get the the player of the week or whatever offensive MVP of the week, uh, that type of thing. But you're still both one and zero. Randy Couture made a, uh, an interesting point, and he was saying like, can you imagine the stress that's on her? Not just to be a fighter and win and make money for your career, but because an organization basically created a whole division for you and also got rid of one. Like, there's got to be some pressure to that, too. I don't care who you are, what you say. I think you still kind of carry that a little bit. Yeah, perhaps. You guys are going to laugh your ass off. Now, unless you guys have cheated, I don't think you'll have an idea of what the odds are now. You want to take a guess, Gus? Minus 3,000? Okay. I'm gonna, I won't tell you if you're right or wrong. Who's with us still? Is Cobb still with us? Still with us. What was the question? All right, Cobb. What do you think is Kayla Harrison's odds? They were tw- minus 25-25. 24 hours ago. What do you think they're at now? Ooh, I'm going to go minus 35. Yeah. Oh, he's playing prices right on you guys. 35. <laughs> I don't <laughs> appreciate <laughs> that. He did the <laughs> well, no, he only said 30. <laughs> and they gave you a 500, uh, 500 window there. Minus 4,000. Really? Just in 24 hours. On the dot? Yeah. So, 4, folks, you got to walk up to the window here at Mandalay Bay and go, here's my 4,000 to win 100 on Kayla Harrison. The reverse is... Here's my 100 to win 1600 on Morgan Fryer. But you got to walk up and spend 4000 to win 100 on Kayla Harrison. Had you done it yesterday, you only would have to pull out 2525 out of the bank. Now you got to pull out 4000 out of the bank. But it means people are betting Kayla Harrison. That's ridiculous. I, just, I mean, I, I just if you wouldn't have the bet money. It. Oh, no, man. I, I wouldn't bet it. I, I, uh, okay. If, if you have that much money, well, it, it almost makes no sense in the sense that if you have the ability to just walk in and 4000 I mean, you know, out of your bank account, what's the point of having 4100 but risking all that? There's got to be a better bet somewhere, you know, that you can find. Can we keep it 100? Can sure. we pull the curtain back? Yeah. Come on, man. Let's be honest here, okay? PFL's invested a lot in this girl. You would imagine that the matchup she's going to get will probably favor her a little bit, wouldn't you say? So you have that on your side. You have the fact that everybody that trains with her, these are like not when you hear Ali talk about her, that's her manager, like of course he's got to say good things, right? But we've heard from other people say how tough she actually is. People that don't have to say these type of things. Mm-hmm. And then her performances in cage have been pretty damn good, you know? I think no matter how good you are, you are going to run into a couple people that are going to test you. Okay. Uh, what would you say was Ronda Rousey's first big test? Misha when she went three rounds with her. Right. But she got through it. Right. Kind of similar what Kayla did. Uh, she probably did a little better than Kayla, I would say, because if you look at the skill level of Misha versus what Kayla went through, it's probably not on the same page. But well, she Mi- hasn't. Uh, Kayla had a good fight from, was it Larissa Pacheco? That yeah. She, fought? she gave her a so p- pretty decent fight. Um, Actually, kind of similar to what Misha did, like a couple tests here and there. The odds are in your favor, right? If you have the money, then I get it. I kind of get it. All right. So when you say that. It's not like Ronda Holly Holm. When you say Ronda that. Ronda was going through people, but you go, hey, but look what Holly Holm has done. You don't have that. I'm feeling. not going to risk $4,000 of my savings unless I have, let's say, 40000 
If I have forty thousand, I'm like, all right, I guess I can lose this for ten percent of my savings. But if I have forty thousand, why would I just want to gain a hundred? Remember, I only make a hundred off those four thousand. That is true. You know what I mean? So like, oh, now my bank account has forty thousand one hundred. Like it, I think the math just I think doesn't make just sense. Go, Watch this. <laughs> yeah, I think they just do shit like I that. I guess, yeah, maybe if some reality shows following you around and you just want to do You've something. You've never done funny. something dumb like that, like. Man, like uh, when you're like in that. Vegas, I remember when I was 21, it was like the most money I'd ever taken with me. I think it was like a thousand bucks or something. And uh, and I was up. And I remember somebody sneezed and I go, watch this. And I gave him a 20. I go, bless you. You know, so he blow his nose. Uh-huh. Just stupid shit like that. The most now, I've done. on that level, I think that's the equivalent of what I did for them. They're just like, watch this. Here's four grand. That dude right there is going to give me back a hundred. Then, then when he gives you back the hundred, you like you tip them the hundred or something stupid, right? Like you just want to be a clown. I think that's who these people are. Yeah, that's really, really. Well, I don't know. All I'm saying is, I've been walking with my buddies to the buffet or something, and I'm and I go, oh, I know. We'll just have them pay, and I'll put a hundred dollar chip on black. <laughs> wait for them to spin it, and if they win, they give me the other black, and then we just have a good laugh. Ha ha! That hundred bucks will pay for the buffet. It's also blown up in my face. So it's a $200 oh buffet. yeah, because I've done that a few times, <laughs> but uh, but you know the just the time that it pays off, it's just funny as hell. It's a good. Does memory. it pay off? I think more I'm, than I think I'm just. Doesn't? I've only done it tw- twice. I think I'm one and one. One and one. Yeah. yeah, but the first time it worked, and that was the funny thing. We're all buzzing like at 6 a.m. after coming home from the club, mm-hmm. so it was just funny because we kind of interrupted the game and then just kept walking. It was just one bet. But anyway, getting back to this, uh, huge huge summer for women's MMA. And arguably, <laughs> I mean, is there another fight or or something that I missed? But uh, I'm, I'm naming off. Oh, sorry. No disrespect to Bellator. Julia Budd. Yeah. And she's got a tough opponent. That Olga Rubin. Both ladies are ranked. So Bellator's got themselves something cooking as well. Yeah. Yeah, the women are on fire. And I think what's really, really helped them. Because I, I look at their progression and I compare it to, like, the progression of the men, Mm -hmm. and I feel like they did it a little quicker. Now, granted, of course, they've got more eyes on them. There's there's less things that the men had to go through, Mm -hmm. but I think what really helps them is just they're in and out. They're right back at it. You don't forget who they are. we got to go to break. We're going to go to break here, and when we come back, we'll talk to Curtis Curtis Millender, UFC welterweight. We'll see what's up for him next. So stay close and don't touch that dial.
button. Here are those two numb nuts, gorgeous George and Goes. All righty, we're back. Now we're going to talk to one of my favorite guests. His name is Curtis Millinder. He fights for the UFC. He's in their welterweight division. I just saw him at the Dana White Contender Series. He was there to support his teammate, Jacob Rosales, who, by the way, we all found out later on he fought with a broken leg, and they backed that up oh. with an X-ray. It was a crack like in his uh, fibula, and it happened while he was preparing for his fight, but he really wanted that contract so bad. he fought. The so Jacob Rosales, if anybody's going, well, who the hell is Every he? Step is he was the you. one that fought in the first fight against Jonathan Pierce. And uh, Pierce, so it was the first fight, and it was gangbusters, man. We all loved it. Everybody in the Apex was like, wow, was, that would be like a fight of the night in a regular UFC card. And, but, you know, he, he wasn't able to win. Pierce won, and, and that was that. But anyway, so joining us now is Curtis Millinder. What's up, Curtis? How you doing? What up, guys? How you doing? Good, my man. Great to have you back on MMA Junkie Radio. You're on with George and Goes. Uh, boy, you got one tough teammate. That, that was who you were telling me that you were there to support, right, Jacob Rosales? Uh, yes, sir, man. He's a, he's a tough kid, and, uh, you know, he – he really wanted to get that opportunity. He he felt like he was ready and he could still do it. Uh, so he risked it all. But you know, he, next next year he'll 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 most likely be on that on the contender series again. So was that news to you, or did you know that he was also fighting with a broken <laughs> fibula? <laughs> no, I was in the group. <laughs> I was in the same group when it happened. So uh, <laughs> I knew exactly when, when it happened. We we we've, we've all known. The whole team have known. We just we keeping it quiet. Right. Um, just so you know, they would they wouldn't have a target, but uh, we we've known for four or five weeks. Wow. So. By, by the way, it wasn't you that snapped it, was it? No, it wasn't me. <laughs> I could see you throwing one of them big old leg kicks and maybe doing a number on somebody's leg. That's for sure. Nah, nah, it wasn't me. I I I, I, I wouldn't do that to him. Okay. All right. Uh, anyway, well, yeah, give him our best, man, because that was very, very courageous when we found, you know, for him to go out there and do that and go for it. And, hell, that's, the think, the definition of what Dana wants. If you ever wanted to break the mold, bring somebody in off a loss. I mean, that that, that dude fought yeah. his ass off. And he, uh, you know, he was – there were times where, you know, the, the tide was going to turn and maybe he was going to get a win because uh, the fight was great on yeah, the yeah, he ground. He, he, you know, he was going hard at him. You know, he had like he hadn't ran in a, a month and a half. You know, hadn't been able to run. Um, really, couldn't really even train for the first two weeks. He was in a boot. So, and uh, it was definitely times where he was going to win that fight, where he could have won that fight. So, you know, uh, Jacob was lost at a hundred percent. Probably would have won that fight in the first round. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we wanted to catch up with you. It was great seeing you there, and. Uh you know, I know after your last fight, you said you wanted to take some time off and just work on your game. So how's that? How's that been coming along, Curtis? Uh, you know, have you been, you know, working in to, to fill the holes in your game, and uh, have you gotten proper rest? Because you did have a, a, you know, pretty busy run in 2017 to that 2018. Yeah, you know, I really feel like uh, that. That's the very important part. Was just the body, giving my body a rest. Uh, Done that, and, you know. Uh, you know, training without getting ready for a fight is a lot different. You know, you can really take your time and learn. Not chasing the, the weight, not dieting. I'm um, just really just having fun training the whole time. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm grappling a lot, staying in the gi, uh, going over to other other gyms, finding some open mats. You know, trying out what I what I've been learning and you know, working on my game on the on the ground. So with different bodies and uh, grappling competitions. You know, I'm, I'm right. Okay. Well, that was three fights in 2017, four fights in 2018, and you had already had two, th two fights in 2019. So for anybody that's wondering, well, what's a lot of fights? There you go. Nine fights in two and a half years. That's a pretty active schedule. Uh, so now what you're saying is you've been just kind of resting, getting better, and how much longer is the plan for you to continue to do that? Are you in any hurry? Like, is your phone on in case the matchmakers want to book you, or do they know to just back off for a little while and let Curtis Millinder be? You know, for, for a little while, you know, you know, just give me some time, but, you know, I'm going to clean up. Curtis, we can barely hear you. 
sorry about that. So I, I should have shown you on Tuesday and let them know that I was ready. So, you know, the, the time table, or the, my phone is on. When it's ready. Okay. I'm ready to go. And then, uh, you know, but other than that, just staying busy with the training. And, you know, I got some, some other fight-related stuff that I'm, I got my hands in. So it's uh, really fun. Is that the announcing okay, or is, the there, is there something else going on? Oh, no, I'm, uh, I actually, uh, you know, I've been doing, I've been commentating for Fight Club OC for about a year and a half now, and I just got the opportunity to help with the matchmaking, so those are things I, I, I've always wanted to do. Like, I'm a, when I say I'm a fan of, this, of the fight game, I'm a fan of all aspects of it. Uh, the fighting, the commentary, making the fights, you know, eventually I'll probably want to be a manager and do all that stuff. I, 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 just, I just love the game and every aspect of it. All right, well, make sure you stick to that. Don't get into radio. We don't need more competition. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nah, the only radio show I'll be on is you guys when I retire. <laughs> All right. How, how do you like the matchmaking? Is, is it stressful? or? Oh, it's, it's, it's very stressful. You know, uh, when it comes to guys not wanting to fight guys because they've done push-ups together before, it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> annoying. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, the way I see it is like you're, you're a fighter. At the end of the day, if you don't like the, the person you fought, that's what it is. But if it's just a fight, after the fight, shake hands, hug it out, and then you can go back to being friends or, you know, mm -hmm. go on about your business. You know, it's, uh, I think with the exception of one person, pretty much everybody I've ever fought, I'm good with. And like, if I, if I can train with them, I train with them. But, you know, that's, like, that's not going to stop me from fighting somebody and trying to be the best one around and putting food on the table. I'm going to venture to guess that guy you're not cool with of all the fighters you fought with is our good friend C.R. Bahar Dezada. Yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, that didn't help. That didn't help with the peacemaking. All right. Uh, all right, Curtis Millinder, our guest here. I'll tell you a funny story, Curtis. Not that you went, hey, George, you got any funny stories to share? No, you didn't You, you didn't say that, but th this will make sense. Have you ever heard of a fighter named Bristol Morundi? He fought in the UFC. He fought in Strike Force, uh, And now he's the host of Flip or Flop in Vegas? Yes, I have Okay, you said yeah? You have? Okay, so check it out. He also has a promotion in Washington, and he told us a funny story once that, you know, he's usually obviously there because he's the promoter, except in this case, he got the hauler to fight Jacare, and I think it was down in Brazil or something like that. And so he gets a call from one of the guys going, no, man, I, I, uh, I can't fight. Uh, I'm not going to be able to make weight, and, uh, you know, I, I just can't do it. I got the fight on late notice, and... and <laughs> Bristol tells him something on the lines of, oh, yeah, you want to hear something funny? I'm sitting in a sauna down in Brazil. I got to fight it at late notice, and I'm fighting a beast named Jacare. So guess what? I ain't trying <laughs> to hear what you got to say. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's funny because you'll be in that exactly. same position where, like, you've seen it all. You've heard it all. And uh, I'm sure you'll be no – I don't think you'll be Curtis Millinder there. Curtis Curtis know. there. You'll be no nonsense, Curtis Millinder. You'll be cursing Millinder. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Just trying to make my just trying to make my first two fights. I've uh, I've already like the you know the being the nice being courteous Curtis isn't gonna work well with uh, matchmaking. <laughs> right. No, I hear you. All right, goes. What do you have for Curtis Millender? So Curtis, I know that you talked about some of the things that you're you're trying to fix in your game. A couple changes, but if you go back and you look at say like the last, I mean look at the last two. What would you say? Is there one thing in common that you feel like uh, is that one thing that uh, that you need to shore up? Uh, aside from the obvious, though. Curtis? Curtis? He did not like uh, that question. Can't, can't hear you there, bud. Is he still there, Josh? All right. Well, we'll continue here. We'll regroup. I think you can kind of hear in the background. It sounds like he might still be there. Yeah, oh, there, there. there he is. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry. In my house, I get uh, bad. Can you get on the roof, maybe? Because, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're suffering over here, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't hear you, Curtis. Yeah. Let's put him on hold. And see All right. Josh let's let's do that, Josh. Let's put him on hold. Maybe we'll take a quick break, and then we'll see if we can regroup. Is, uh, is that a plan? I think that All right, sounds let's, good. let's take a quick break. It's MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation Channel 156. Hopefully, Curtis can give us another 5, 10 minutes so we can finish with him because we always love chatting with him, but right now it's just breaking up a little bit. We'll be right back, folks. If you missed it.
Excellence and excitement in your Vitamix. Add ice, and you get MMA Junkie Radio. We must have four gangsters in the booth. Russo, Josh, Nico, and that sounds like the, the, the blueprints, the fingerprints, excuse me, of... Uh, one Andre the Giant there. Right, that's Hall and Oates. Hall and Oates. Yeah. I think he left it on the... Uh, see, I know a little bit about there on the board. Oh, or yeah. No, on the wall. Gotcha. All right. Let's bring back Curtis Millender. What's up, Curtis? All right. Sorry about that, guys. All no right. Problem. Yeah, sorry, man. We, we just weren't able to hear anything you had to say, and we didn't want to miss a moment because we're really enjoying uh, this chat. So anyway, I'll, I'll let it. I'll give it back to Goes here. He had some questions for you. What you don't know is Curtis was actually doing a shout out because you know it's the anniversary of the moon landing, and I think he was trying to say like, "Hey, this is how it sounded." <laughs> like a shout out to the moon landing, you know? Because that's what it sounded like, Curtis, for a little bit. But uh, all, 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 all the homies in in, in space, yep, they understand what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, shout out to, <laughs> to Saturn. But all right, look, so what I was asking yeah, was, man. aside from the obvious, in the last two fights, is there one thing that you can point to that, that both losses kind of had in common? Um, I think just the pressure. You know, I didn't, obviously, I didn't get the pressure, uh, the Santos at all, but uh, where, where below that first round and a half, I was tagging them, I was moving forward, walking them down, you know, not being predictable, hands, feet, mixing up pretty good, and... uh the second I stopped, he took over. I applaud him for that. And uh, but you know that I think that was that was that was a big reason why I was able to, to win those first three fights because I walked everybody down. Um, the times I got taken down, I was it was when I was taking breaks and not pushing the pressure. So, um, you know, I think that's that's you know that's the one thing I, I, I if I would have changed, you know, we've been having a totally different talk right now. Your division is the probably the toughest division i think that's what you say right george it's up there man for it's, sure. i mean it's one of them but it may actually be the toughest division that being said and i have to assume you're going to agree with me what would you think is number two right behind you guys Uh-oh. most competitive which one uh, are we doing it again oh, there you are yeah, we got you we now. lost it the first part but what, what, what were you saying all right um so 155 is definitely the the next you know toughest division. You know, it, it's just crazy because every especially everybody at work welterweight, everybody's fast, everybody's strong. There's no there's no in between with us. You got like the super athletes there, and the 55ers is not that far that that much further away. Dude, you know what? You know if you think about it, to me it seems like lightweights is just little brothers, and welterweights are just their bigger brothers. A little Damn, bit. Damn, you, you think know? so? Well, just because it's that's Wait, the is that a compliment or is that th- a that's the two divisions that's got like out. a like a hundred fighters in it, you know? So there's a lot of them that that can relate mm. to this. But uh, I mean, I suppose, yeah, maybe the welterweights are faster than the li- sorry, the lightweights are faster than the welterweights, and the featherweights are faster than the lightweights. I get all that, but it's just those two divisions where there's a ton of power. There's it, it's it's something that most people can relate to because most people are in that pocket of being like whatever. I like that, that division holds like five nine to six two or whatever. How tall are you, Curtis? Six yeah. three, right? I'm six two. Six I'm two. six two. There you go. So yeah, just kind of like in that pocket. Now once you start getting into like Johnny Walker, he's six six. All right, the light heavyweights. You don't see a lot of them dudes. And then going back to the Benavides and the Cejudos. You know what I mean? Uh, aside from that bagel guy, there's just you know <laughs> those are the smaller cats. But <laughs> have did you, you watch that video by have the seen way? That guy. No, I haven't. <laughs> oh man, when you when you're done with us, <laughs> we're gonna send you Google, a text. Google bagel guy on uh, on YouTube. Yeah, you see a guy mouthing off, getting taken care of. Oh yeah, those are the best videos too. Yeah. All right, so Curtis, I do want to go back to something here. Um, matchmaking. So uh, when you're picking up the phone and calling, they're aware that you're a UFC fighter, right? Or are some of them so oblivious they don't even know that? Uh, no, <clears throat> yeah, it's right now. It, we, we're it's a local show, so I'm a big fan of uh, you know SoCal MMA, and I'm at a lot of fights. So, and I know a lot of guys. So, usually when I reach out, it's you know, to people that I've known. So, it's only been a few people that like didn't say anything. But you know, once you start talking to the managers and the coaches like, in SoCal LA area, they know who I am. So, uh, I had one guy <laughs> who. Uh, Told me that he wanted to. Uh, he sent the email saying that he wanted to be, uh, to you know, to have his pro debut. And uh, I, I sent him a text message, and 
they call me. He's like, oh man, you're, like, you're Curtis Miller, Curtis Miller, like UFC Curtis Miller. I'm like, yeah. So uh, that that was the only one, uh, only you know, surprised one I had. But that was everybody else. I pretty much know that I've dealt to. Now I still consider you part of the younger generation because you know you've just come into the UFC about a year ago and all that. But is there even a younger generation that's even more entitled, kind of giving you, maybe not attitude, but just being difficult? Um, no, it's not. I wouldn't say it'd be difficult, but I, I well, it, it's clearly a little difficult. But these guys are just, uh, they just, they got it. They got to get out of that. I don't want to fight guys because I've trained with them before or anything like that. You know, I, I don't, I don't think you can ever be the best in the world if you're not willing to to fight anybody, especially in this. In, in, in this game you, you got to change that part about you i'll fight anybody except for my dad but my dad's not gonna make 170 so <laughs> <laughs> and and would you say what about in in the smaller show re, you know the, the regional shows are fighters making weight or do, do they miss a lot um you know <clears throat> yeah, they they miss a lot but you know sometimes it can be a number of things you know some of the smaller shows aren't as organized. Um, it can be a money issue. A lot of guys, you know, oh, only a thousand bucks. I don't want to go through all that, but you know, it's, it, you got to pay your dues. <laughs> you got to pay, pay your dues at this level. Uh, that way, when you, you you know you have a more of appreciation to, of it when you get to those higher levels, right? And, and you're missing out on more than just a couple hundred bucks when it starts to become thousand. Exactly, because just to get on. I think it's either the Ultimate Fighter or Dana White Contender Series. One of the two. The criteria is you have to have at least three wins. You know what I mean? So yeah, there's yeah. those first three wins, unless you're super lucky, are going to be two hundred bucks, five hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, whatever. And this, it is part of just paying your dues. There's a chance that by the time you do your medicals and pay out your coach or whatever, you may be in the negative. But this isn't supposed to be easy. Yeah, not at all. You know, I I was like very blessed and fortunate that I had coaches. That you know, they they know I wasn't making a whole lot of money, and they worked with me until I got to to the level where I'm at now. And you know, now they're you know now they're being compensated for that work they put in. So, um, it's it, it, but everybody's not going to get lucky like that. When so you, you know, you, but it no matter what, you're going to have to do the do the job regardless. Would you get paid in your first fight? W would you be willing to share that? Um, I believe it was. Uh, one thousand for the fight and a two hundred dollar win bonus, but it was my debut, so they had to pay for all of my medicals. That ain't bad. <laughs> that's one of the better ones so I've heard, I think, brother. I think I got. I, yeah, but that's but that's normal here. Uh, SoCal is the, a normal person like a uh, thousand to twelve hundred for for a debut. Wow. Um, you know what we've then, heard? But you know, we've heard a two hundred dollar beer time. Apart, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, one thing that set me apart uh, was. Um, the promotion, actually, the promotion I'm commentating and doing the matchmaking for now is the same promotion I started with with Fight Club OC. Mm -hmm. So I was selling 50 to 100 tickets every fight. Mm. So I was making really good commission on my tickets. I, I also, like, I'm a hustler. I, I, I got shirts made and I sold shirts. Like, I did what I had to do to make sure, you know, I was able to, to, make, to make some money, some okay money, you know. Okay. Um, what I was going to say was, We've asked that question to a lot of fighters over the years, and we've heard anything between uh, nothing, a $200 beer tab, uh, a high five, or a pat on the back. There's a lot of fighters, man, that have gotten jacked. You know what I mean? There was somebody so that for you to they, get, had to pay, they had to pay. They like had to pay. Like by, the that, right? the, by the end of the <laughs> night, they had to pay the promoter. So to hear 1000 uh, up front and 200 to 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 win. Shout out to Fight Club OC, and not just because we're from the OC, but really, really, we've heard a lot of stories, and that that to me is impressive. Yeah, you know, and um, I, I'm pretty sure every promotion I, I fought for, as far as our, well, like the local promotions here, Fight Club OC, uh, CFX, which is now uh, LF, LFX, um, they've always pay pay pretty well, you know. Um, I, I've never made less than a thousand uh, a fight, so uh, it, you know it's always been, uh, I, I guess, okay. But you know, I was making a thousand, but I already had a family to take care of, cause, so that that twelve hundred went pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. All right, one more question. Going back to uh, you know you wanting to work on you, 
So you talked about your grappling a lot, your wrestling, your you know, you're wearing the gi. Let me ask you another question because you actually mentioned it in one of your answers. Uh, you said you you're taking parts of a round off. Is it because you have trouble getting your second and third win, or would you just raise your hand and admit, hey man, maybe my cardio just isn't where I want, where I need it to be? Like, what would you say is the answer to that? Um, you know, uh, it's hard to pinpoint it. You know, sometimes I get, I wouldn't, I, my cardio is always there. You know, I work hard. You know, I'm always running. I'm always doing sprints. Yeah. Um, but I definitely doubt my cardio. Sometimes I'll get in that funk. Like, okay, let me take a little bit of a break. That way I don't gas myself out. Mm-hmm. When, and then when you look at my fights, I don't have a really high output anyway, so I'm not going to gas myself out because that's just not, it's not my style of fighting anyway. Gotcha. So, um, I definitely second guess my cardio. Um, but, uh, you know, once I get over that, I'll, I'll be fine. All right. Well, it's been a great catch-up with you. We wish you the best. And whenever you get that fight booking, man, let us know. We'd love to have you on to uh, preview that fight. And anytime you want to come on and talk about Fight Club OC, let us know. Awesome. Thank you. We, we, we actually have a show uh, August 3rd at the Gardens Casino in Hawaiian Gardens. And we also have uh, our official Fight Club OC show uh August 22nd at the fairgrounds and in Costa Mesa, a, a, a flyweight title fight, women's flyweight title fight. I have a, a really good uh, fight at 155 as well, too, so it's, it's, it's going to be a good show. Right on. All right, Curtis. Thanks for the time. We'll talk to you soon. Awesome. All Thank right. you, guys. Have a good one. All right, you too. Follow him on Twitter. It's at Curtis Curtis. And, guys, we got to get out to one of those, right? Sounds yeah, like fun. Sounds like fun. Right back, back in the old, Yeah, the old stomping grounds. All right, one hour down, one hour to go. It's the MMA Junkie Radio Show on Fight Nation, channel 156. We'll be right back. Junkie Radio. All right, we're back. Cover your ears if you don't want to hear spoilers. Eh, yeah, no, I, I, I want to promote these guys. On ESPN2, right now, taking place is PFL4. It's season two, and it's week four. They already had weeks one, two, and three, and every week they basically focus on two divisions. So this week is the second regular season matchup for the welterweights and the women's lightweights. Now, today's going to be a quicker card. In fact, some of the people were talking about the the pacing because Sarah Kaufman's fight got eliminated. And then uh, Zane Kamaka, he also, he he didn't make weight, so I guess they pulled his fight. So they only have uh, ten fights. And remember, the women's lightweight is only eight ladies, so that's four fights. So with one of them gone, that's three. And then uh, the men is supposed to have, let me think here, let me see my math's right, six fights, I believe. And one of them's done so far. So I think like eight total. But, uh, yeah, they were complaining a little bit because of some quick stoppages. Mm -hmm. It took a while to get to the main card, but they did get to the main card. So I'm trying to see who that might be that's out there. But they're uh, they're up on ESPN, too. I can see them here in the sports book at the Mandalay Bay Casino. So actually, without knowing, I just won't say anything. Also, a big trade in the NBA. Chris Paul from the Houston Rockets will be going to Oklahoma City for Russell Westbrook. And I guess Paul and some draft picks are headed to Oklahoma 
City, Oklahoma City sending Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook will be reunited with James Harden. I imagine, like I was telling Goes, they had to have run that by James Harden. Hey, you guys were you yeah. guys were dogs, right? You guys got along. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, we can figure this out. And so now that team is gonna, you know, still be like one hell of a one-two punch. But they were different players back then. Correct. Yes, they both demand the ball. However, Harden could probably slide into a number two spot because he just he does have a, a great outside game. Whereas Russell Westbrook, everything's basically driving the lane, driving the lane. But that guy can pass. That guy can rebound. He can do it all. That's why he's uh, one of those guys that has. Tr I think he averaged a triple double one season. But anyway, so now Chris Paul goes the other way. But see, a guy like Chris Paul, he's in the twilight of his career. I would think that's the type of guy that says, "Man, send me somewhere where I can win now." I'm not trying to build. Apparently, these guys have stockpiled between the Paul George trade and the Russell Westbrook trade. Which, by the way, if you're an Oklahoma City fan, one week ago you're like, "Okay, listen, we got Paul." We got <laughs> we got Paul George. We got Russell Westbrook. We need to add a piece. You know uh -huh. what I mean? The same way the Lakers are trying to add Kawhi. What if we add a piece? And now, one week later, they're like, holy cow, we got nothing. Yeah. Other than a shitload of draft picks. Uh, but we, our two stars are gone. You know, if, you're, if you have those two jerseys, what do you do with them? That's it. By the way, is there going to be any, like, tampering or anything like that going towards the Clippers? You're right. Paul George was happy as a clam. Uh, no, yeah. I, I had heard he was. Now all well, of a sudden he, he's gone. He, he's okay, you're right. Going it. back to last year, he did sign. He must have liked it for that half season he was there because he re-signed with him. But then something must have happened this last year, either with the organization or whatever. I haven't. All I'm kind. I'm just chasing headlines, but I haven't seen like, oh, what went wrong? We all know Paul George eventually wanted to come home, but to the Lakers. He's with the Clippers, and I think Kawhi had the same dream. But now they're both with the Clippers, and they both just gave a middle finger to the Lakers. So mm -hmm. they are the enemy. So now you got a lot of teams that have kind of like these two powerhouses. Yeah. Some of them you could maybe argue three. Right. right? Like the but like the Warriors, Durant, Curry, Thompson. Well, but now Durant is moving to yeah. Brooklyn, we'll say in a year, because he's going to rehab the whole year. And then Thompson, same thing. But, yeah, you're right. Not. Not too many of them had that third piece. And, well, I guess Houston has two superstars. Mm -hmm. And the Clippers have it. And, oh, I can't wait for that season to get started. But the one thing the Thunder does have is eight first-round draft <laughs> picks lined up through 2026. Um, and, you know, I mean, good for you. But we just went through that with the Lakers. D'Angelo Russell, Lonzo Ball. Uh, Julius Randle. What do you think we got all those guys? All those guys went in the first round. A couple of them were like number twos. Brandon Ingram. And we weren't really picking up traction. We were getting better, but we weren't getting to the playoffs. I think those guys would have gotten up. They're, they're going to get a little better. I Maybe, think. but so here's what happens. By the time they started, by the time that last guy started to break out, Randle's going, I'm, re I'm unrestricted. What are we doing? Yeah. And the Lakers said, we can't have you. So they sent him to the Pelicans. So it's almost like you got to get them all within like two seasons together if you're going to make that work because if you just stagger one season after the next, A, that means you sucked to get to that point, and B, it means like the, the guy you drafted four years ago is going to be a free agent. He may not want to stick around. But, hey, this isn't the NBA channel. That's Channel 86. You'll love it, folks. It's one of my favorites. And, again, Chris Paul to Oklahoma City, Russell Westbrook to Houston. Now, back to mixed martial arts. How about Daniel Cormier? He was up for the Nespi, along with Henry Cejudo and Amanda Nunez. And yesterday, well, it hasn't aired yet, but we're not going to hold on to that spoiler. But yesterday, we found out he won. Now, did you see how that worked out? What do you mean? They were all kind of standing outside, and Dana White just kind of opened an envelope and said, Daniel Cormier. <laughs> they weren't in I the aud see that part. auditorium. Have you ever seen the Oscars when they go, <laughs> best actor, so-and-so, yeah. best actress, so-and-so, best director, so-and-so. And then but they'll they also go, go earlier. Yeah, earlier today, earlier. the uh, best makeup artist in an international gonzo film mm -hmm. went to. You know, and then they'll, name, they'll name off a lot of, like, different uh, categories that I guess not as many people pay attention to. And then they'll either scroll them fast or just say them, and then that'll be it. Or maybe they'll show a quick little highlight. Oh, thank you, you know. But uh, it's not aired. We didn't even make that, or I. Get I don't know how it's gonna play out. I mean, I thought I, I didn't see that part, but I would imagine that probably looks super cheesy. 
It they sounds did. like something they did in the red carpet or something. But. Just all three of them are standing. You can see the sunlight. They're standing outside. Okay. Here, uh, I mean, it was a big step that mixed martial arts is its own category now. I guess if you look back to last year, you get lumped up with the Floyd Mayweathers, the Manny Pacquiao's, right, of, of boxing. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that's a big step. But, yeah, I guess we're still the little brother getting shoved aside. I mean, outside's kind of stupid, but. Yeah, so Cormier won, and honestly, here's why he deserved it. Earlier in the year, he defended the light heavyweight belt. Then in the middle of the year, he won the heavyweight belt. That's why he was a champ champ. He relinquished the light heavyweight belt, and that's why John Jones fought Alexander Gustafson for that belt. But before that happened, he defended the heavyweight belt against Derek Lewis. He basically went 3-0 in 2018. This award show is halfway through 2019, so it kind of mixes you up a little bit. Henry Cejudo is going, you know, he's out there telling people, well, I beat TJ Dillashaw I just want, yeah, but see, that happened in 2019. In 2018, much respect. We get that you beat DJ. But that was his big moment. It doesn't compare to what Cormier did. Mm -hmm. Amanda Nunes had a little bit of a better argument. She could say, hey, I beat Raquel Pennington, it's and then I out. upset Chris Cyborg. Hey, that's legit. But this other guy did something similar, except he had one more win than you did. So I think it was kind of obvious. Did, I now, was, I was that ask, said. They knew, right, the other two? Their gooses were cooked? They had to, yeah. <laughs> but uh, They were like the really rottens and the, and the yogi yahoo's just standing up. Like, uh. Now, I would imagine that uh, for this year, it'll be a little bit different. You know, uh, DC has yet to fight, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, unless he closes really strong, I don't see him doing more than a 2-0. and And who knows? He may just retire after. He doesn't even know. After yeah. the, uh, Stephen Miocic. But Henry Cejudo has to be feeling really good about the 2020 ESPYs, which reflect back on 2019. He's got to be feeling pretty good about that. Now, Amanda Nunes, see, that Cyborg win, that goes in 2018. 2019, the only thing she's been able to bank so far is this recent win over Holly Holm. And I, I would imagine right now Henry Cejudo is going, hey, that's pretty cool, but look at what I did. He's going to be unbearable if we add an SP to that trophy case. Can you imagine? Yeah, pretty much. Two belts, a gold medal, and he's got an SP in one hand. We could have a little bit of fun with, hey, who else might be in the running, but I think that might we might have to save that conversation for another time. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, congratulations to Daniel Cormier. Uh, I can't say enough about that dude. He's really, really worked hard, and it's not like he's our best buddy or anything, but we've known him for a long time, and after covering him for at least a decade, maybe more, I can just say I, I don't really hear bad things about that guy. No one's come to me and said, dude, he was acting like a fool last Saturday at XS or Oh, man, you don't know, but, you know, there was an incident in San Jose. I, I haven't heard anything like that. He's just a family guy. Um, he coaches this, the Gilroy Wrestling, high school wrestling team. Uh, great teammate. I mean, he always deferred to Kane as the greatest heavyweight champion. He always waited his time, fought at light heavyweight. And then when there was a moment where he could go in there, he did with Kane's blessing. And now with Kane losing to Francis Ngannou, I think now he's only now kind of maybe thumping his chest a little and going, well, you know, maybe I'm one of the greats too when it's offered to him because there's still your Fedors, your Canes, your Juniors, Fabricios, whatever, well, you know, all the people that have ever been involved in, in some sort of a chat. In fact, you know what? Fedor's case starts to get a little better now that Verdum's lost a couple times and mm -hmm. Kane's lost a couple times because before Fedor had lost to Verdum, he never fought Kane. But his case was getting lost in the shuffle of, well, that was 2002 and 2006 and 2000 this. But I get it. He's also lost a few fights at Bellator. But uh, now the other guys have lost as well. So, uh, He's lost to smaller guys, though. That kind of hurts, too. Yeah. Well, Mitch Young's Dan, big. Dan Henderson. Dan Henderson, yeah. Um, all right. Let me ask you this question. I think the, the guys on MMA tonight. R.J. Clifford and Jimmy Smith were talking about this. John Jones, does he look at what Daniel Cormier is getting, the attention, all that stuff? Does he seethe because had he just 
Nat had all these crazy personal problems, maybe he could be that guy, right? Daniel Cormier, the flip side, if you were to tell him you win the fights with John, but maybe you don't achieve some of this other stuff that's come out of from John going away, would you still want? Like, what's more important to you? The way you ended up with probably millions of dollars. He's been he's been guest hosting TV shows, right? He could have been a, a commentator at WWE. There's a lot of things that have come his way. An SP mm-hmm. champ, champ. Would he give that up to huh. have beaten John Jones twice? Oh, to go two and zero. Yeah. Oof. To go to a no, but somewhere along the line, he lost a couple of fights. Maybe we'll say that, but well, no, there's there can't be a maybe. He did yeah. or he didn't. Yeah. Let's just say, let's just say he would have taken him a different route where it didn't amount to what he what he's done now. <sighs> I think you take one and one. Yeah. Yeah. But to go two and zero oh against John, but uh, like you're saying, maybe he lost the Bigfoot or someone. Or someone. Yeah. Uh, fuck. That's a great question, man. I want to ask him that because it Without does steal a lot of John me. Jones's shine, and that is like a a rival of his. But like, okay, if it meant that he didn't win the Strike Force Grand Prix, or if it meant like, if you're telling me those two I think losses, like, I think like he were that, the Miocic fight and the and the Grand Prix fight. That's two belts that he didn't win. Then I don't know because the one thing he can say is, look, on paper, John. Has only beat me once because of the mm. PED stuff. Now, on our show, to be fair to DC, he did say, I lost. In that second fight, even the one that got taken away, he did say, I lost to him, man. I was there. That head kick got me. Blah, blah, blah. Um, <sighs> so it's a really, really great question. And I'd a, like to see how he answers it. He's such a competitor. That's the thing. Yeah. But then again, come on, man. Who doesn't love money and attention? I think 1-1 one, one would be nice. I think he'd love to be 1-1. One, one. I think it's one of those where you'd say, I'd ra- I would have rather beaten John Jones, but probably give us that dumb smile where it really means, but I do like the money. Well, if you beat John Jones, you're making some dough, too. Yeah, but that's the whole point of the question is, like, maybe it just took him in a different route where he doesn't have the things that he has now. SBs, that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. We'll have to save that for Daniel Cormier sometime. You uh, you got me there. All right. There's some matchups that are coming up, and we're going to talk about those. But right now, we're going to take a break. Plus, we also got our daily debate coming up. So don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. It's MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation Channel.
you cross them, they will destroy you. Just ask Three Finger Eddie and Pete the Penguin. Who are they, you ask? My point exactly. They are Gorgeous George and Goes. And this is MMA Junkie Radio. All right, this is a classic from like the late 80s, early 90s. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, same song by Digital Underground. So and I was kind of joking earlier because Josh started the show with us. Mm-hmm. And then when I said, hey, Josh, something, it was Russo. Russo. Mm-hmm. And then I was talking to Russo, and somehow Nico's voice popped in. I was like, wow, what's going on here? And that was my joke. I was like, what is this, Digital Underground? Because it was always a different voice. Yeah. But this is the song I was referencing. There's like three different <laughs> rappers in this one, including uh, one that you... I don't know if we have time to get to it, but a really, really popular name that nobody knows is on this song. Um, So this is obviously Humpty Hump here, right? And yeah, exactly. This is Humpty Hump right here. And then you heard the first voice. I forget what his name is. Uh, They're from Northern California, if I'm not mistaken. But I'll just tell you. I'll just burst it right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tupac's actually towards the end. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it was a classic back in there. I mean, this, this, this song was on in the club. It was full. I mean, you would leave. If you told the bartender uh, two drinks and he was in the middle of making it, you'd go, I'll be back for him. You know, I'll roll my, ch- I'll roll the dice that the drinks may or may not be there. But you didn't want to miss the song. Everybody just, boom, crowded the dance floor. If you watch the Tupac movie, they kind of cover how they met and stuff. Really? Yeah. Yeah, see, this Pretty is another cool. voice right here. Uh, you know the, the text that, I, that we got from uh, Josh? We had a caller, Blake from Cleveland, uh-huh. but I only saw it out of my peripheral, and I thought it had a, it was a trade involving Blake Griffin and Cleveland, and then uh, then it says, uh, well, I can't say the second part, but yeah, I don't know, and then I thought I saw Atlanta instead of PFO, I thought it said ATL, and I'm like, what is going on now? Well, that, that would have been something that. else, although I don't know who Atlanta has, but... Oh, Ooh, they're still playing it. Nice. Mm. When I hang around with the underground, girls used to frown. When I, <laughs> I used to know it, dude. Yeah, that's Tupac right there. All right. Good job, guys. Um, I think, look, I, 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 some of you might be driving home and just want to see the fights, and I get it. That's, that's pretty fair. They're on ESPN2 right now, and we'll just leave it at that. Now, when the fights have taken the place earlier in the day, I'm like, hey, man, what are you going to do? I mean, this is a, a sports channel here where we talk about the latest stuff that's going on. But, hey, in this, in this day and age where not many people watch stuff live, it's all pre-recorded. This is a drive-time show on the West Coast. East Coasters maybe are putting their kids to bed and they want to catch these fights. All right, we'll spare you because uh, there has been some pretty decent results happening. And right now, PFL is on ESPN2. That's channel 209 if you have DirecTV. Otherwise, check your local cable and satellite listings anyway all right earlier in the week i saw well going back to last saturday i saw cub swanson and his wife where'd you see them uh i saw them at new york new york oh okay uh his wife is kenda perez who's a ufc host used to see her before on fox sports she used to do the best of pride Mm -hmm. and now she i think does the modello like little modello chat and some interviews so they were together, and I saw them, and I just go, hey, what's going on? You know, what you got cooking? He was, like, kind of playing a little coy. Well, you know, <laughs> something in the works, blah, blah, blah. All right. Yeah, I figured now's not the time to go, come on, give me the fight, you know, all that. I had a beer in he my hand. He had, a, he had a beer in his hand. And uh, 24 hours later, I see Cub Swanson versus Cron Gracie. And I was thinking, fool, you could have told me that one. You know what I mean? That sounded like it was on the, on the back burner. And uh, that's not right, the back burner. It's just, you know. Yeah, it is. Is it? Okay. Isn't it on the back burner? I think so. I don't know. And uh, But basically what I meant was, yeah, he could have given me that little scoop, I guess. But I didn't want to pressure him. That's not really been my game. I, maybe I should have. But as soon as I saw that, I go, wow, up-and-comer versus a, a veteran. You know what I mean? However, I checked in with Cub, and he says that's not official just yet. Now I see that Faber, Uriah Faber, who fights this weekend. That's right, folks. If you haven't heard, he's coming out of retirement to fight this weekend against Ricky Simone. He was interested in Crone Gracie. Now that makes sense. Uriah Faber's actually submitted a lot of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts. But Crone Gracie, to me, seems like one of those guys 
where he's kind of on another level, like a guy that's competed at Abu Dhabi and won. Mm-hmm. He's just a Gracie for crying out loud. He's we Hicks saw Faber and Gracie's. And Quintet, right? Yeah. I think he had to go with uh, Sakuraba. That went to a draw, right? Mm-hmm. So in draws, I think they just both go out. Yeah. But he was interested in testing himself against Crone Gracie. The fight didn't happen. I still think Ricky Simone's a tough matchup. You know what? I think I got the odds page pulled up. I'll tell you right now who the uh, the favorite is. Ah, uh, they wouldn't have it that early. Yeah, it's right here. Ricky Simone minus three eighty, according to Five Dimes. Uh, Uriah Faber plus three fifteen. Now again, Uriah Faber, he gets that fight to the ground. He's huh? pretty tough, man. He submitted a lot of black belts. We went on a military trip with him, so I had to do a little bit of reading up on it, but I could have sworn there was eight black belts that he had submitted. Um, so to see him call out Crone Gracie, I, I'm in no position to go, you're an idiot. What, what are you doing that for? He's had mm-hmm. success against great ground fighters. He's got Ricky Simone. But I'm tying it all in with the fact that don't uh, – I, I still think there's a little bit of a T to cross and an I to dot. With the Cub Swanson Crone Gracie match. At that point, it's it's probably something. It'll important. probably happen. Yeah, it'll probably happen. But I guess it wasn't official. I invited Cub to come on the show. Cub's not a big fan of doing interviews. Uh, towards the end of a fight camp. Now that fight's not even. I think I think it's in October, and I think it's in San Francisco. They're actually going to that new arena where the Warriors are going to play. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're actually going to be in the city of San Francisco, which. If I'm not mistaken, that might be the first time. I think so, They've yeah. gone to San Jose plenty of times. They've gone to Sacramento plenty of times. They even went to Oakland. Oakland's where Chael Sonnen was beating Anderson Thanks. Silva for four and a half rounds and then lost. But I I don't remember them going to San Francisco, but that's where they're going. Huh. And the Warriors, obviously, are not going to be at Oracle Arena next season. They built a brand new arena on the bay. It's right by that uh, the baseball stadium, which if you've never gone, that's a really cool baseball stadium. Been there once. <laughs> Well, yeah, but, uh, you know, a lot of people just like to tour the stadiums. And it's really close to Gilbert Melendez's gym, too. The coldest I've ever been. Is the summer you spent in San Francisco? <sighs> kind of. Uh, when we went to, w- not Candlestick. What was it called before that? It was Candlestick. It went back to Candlestick? But it had a no. different name, right? No, it was always Candlestick, and then they moved to Santa Clara, and now that one's just called Levi Stadium. We have, uh, do, have we gone to Levi Stadium? No. Okay, then, yeah, it was Candlestick. There was a game there one night where it was freezing that and copa america and peru were the two coldest i've ever been the brazil game um yeah it might have been brazil you were cold that night Mm-hmm. oh wow brazil and somebody i can't remember who they played that night like chile or something like that well yeah candlestick is right off of the bay so it can get pretty cold there uh-huh i've been in the snow but i had proper gear mm-hmm. this was the coldest i had ever been those two nights if you will allow me, they're both sporting. I, I, I want to go even further off topic. I recently saw, I think it was NFL or YouTube or something, a special on Michael Irvin. He's the one cowboy. Maybe there's one one other guy, but there's not too many Dallas Cowboys that I am a fan of because I despise the Dallas Cowboys. But I always love Michael Irvin's tenacity. I remember him coming through the U. He went to the University of Miami. Mm-hmm. He was one of those guys that uh, just stirred the pot. And I wound up with him a lot on fantasy football. So for whatever reason, I just liked his intensity. I wished the Niners had a guy like that. You know what I mean? So anyway, they were doing this special on him going into the Hall of Fame. And they got him and Emmett Smith and Troy Aikman together. And they all talked about all the great moments that they had. You know, they broke some records. They won some titles. But they said... There was a game that they lost that was almost as enjoyable as some of the big games that they won. And the reason was because they went down 21 nothing, but then fought back and almost tied the game. Eventually, the 49ers won. I was at that game. So that was one of my favorite sporting moments ever. And to know that the losing team paid a lot of respect to the 49ers and what they were saying there. Uh, but just for them to talk about that game, because they showed a lot of highlights. And it reminded me of just me being there. What I remember the most was Troy Aikman threw an interception like seconds into the game. Mm-hmm. Not more than 30 seconds had gone by and uh, Eric Davis intercepted it and ran it back. Took it to the He doesn't the get house. the credit he deserves. And when he did He's that tough. goes, I stood up and said, yeah! And I blew out my vocal cords 30 <laughs> seconds into the game. <laughs> really? So literally 
I was just talking to my girlfriend at the time, Michelle. She had taken me. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, should we get a coffee? Or, hey, should we get a hot chocolate? Like, I was literally, I sounded like one of the Italian mobsters. And, uh, but I literally blew out my vocal cords just on that first cheer. They didn't come back? No, it was worth it. No, because I was like that for um, a week. Really? Until they finally came back. Oh, wow. But it was just on that one, like, yeah, you know, and. So when they were reliving it, it was really, really cool to see uh, how much that game meant to them, even though they lost because they said they overcame a lot of adversity. They fought back, and it was against a great team, but they came up short. But they proved to themselves that they were never out of a game, you know. But I remember I remember all the details from that game, every single one. Anyway, back to uh, fight bookings. Mm-hmm. Uh, Czech Congo is finally going to get that title shot. He's going to be fighting Ryan Bader in L.A., by the way, at the Inglewood Forum. Uh, where the Lakers used to play. And on that same card, Lyoto Machida fights Gegard Musasi. So I think Musasi and Crone Gracie will happen, folks. Uh, as far as Bellator, there's a couple more uh, for you there. Cup. What did I say? Musasi. Musasi and Machida's happening, along with Bader and Congo. And I said, I think Swan Cub and Crone Gracie will happen. No, I didn't say that. Okay. Well, I think, it, I think that fight will happen. But... I got it from a good source that it's not just done yet. That Bellator card, I like it. I, I would go to that. That's a good one-two punch. And then how many times did we kind of talk about Czech Congo's position being outside of that tournament, how that might actually benefit him a little bit? It actually did. And now you got Ryan Bader, who you could argue that maybe he'll be able to do the whole champ-champ thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he could. Wait a minute. He well, is the champ. No, I mean, defend. you're talking about defend. Defend. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's got Bader, and uh, I would imagine the light heavyweight would be next for him. What uh, What else can you, you got that uh, Nemkov guy who beat Phil Davis and Liam McGeary? I think that would be a viable candidate to to maybe get a title shot. You could never. I'm trying to think how you can top champ champ stuff. You could never fight twice in one night because if you're a champ, you're fighting five rounds, and that's that's a limit. Right. Right? That's right. the trick. If it were a tournament, then you could somehow fudge it where you could fight twice in one night, but they wouldn't be title fights. Yeah, and I don't know. What, what could they do? Like, how do you top being champ champ? Well, like what GSP champ, champ, did. Champ. GSP's already a champ champ, but he relinquished both belts. Now he comes back and goes, I heard 165 is opening up, and then you try and win that one. You have Maybe. to kind of sneak in there on some, you know. You could be champ champ in two can do organizations. It. Bader and DC can do it. They're already heavyweight and light heavyweight, and neither guy is going to get down to 185. So they're out. Connor could do it because he could find a, a guy that to fight at 170. Uh, I don't think he'll ever go back to 45. So Hudo could do it because he can go up to 45. I don't again. I don't think this is likely that he beats a guy like Max Holloway, but he could do it. But there's just some fighters that physically just cannot do it. Now the funny thing is, I think DC wrestled at 184 in college, but that was 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyhow. Uh, another thing, Juliana Pena is back. She's back this weekend, too. Mm-hmm. It's, it's quick, this, huh? It's just kind of gotten brushed under the carpet, but she actually fights. She hasn't fought, like, in two and a half years. She became a mom. She just wanted to step away from the sport. She's um, commentating over at Combate, but she got a call. A uh, fighter fell out, and now she's stepping in. I think it was Sarah McMahon that was supposed to fight. Uh, she fell off of the card, so now Juliana Pena is actually going to be fighting this weekend. In Sacramento, and I mean, she's got a really decent bantamweight record. So with the win, I, I'm just gonna say she could be in the uh, in the mix. It's Nico Montano that she's fighting, and Nico Montano, same thing. Like, hey, girl, where you been? You know what I mean? Good to see her back in action. She, I mean, obviously she wasn't training for a fight, but she was probably training in this time. Being a mother, I'm sure there were there was a, a little period where she probably didn't train at all. But you would imagine that before that, the Valentina Shevchenko loss, like, she was one of the higher-ups in that division. And if she could have just maybe shored up that ground game a little bit, I guess the sub-defense? Well, yeah, even I, that, would even I, say, mean, I would even say she that right uh, she's a pretty damn good grappler as is. But, yeah, you're right. She got caught. I mean, a good grappler can get caught. It's not like one has never been caught. But, yeah, mm-hmm. um, uh, she, she has, you know, she's 8-3 and three overall. And I, I think this is a, will be a really good test to see where she's at. And then one last thing to close this segment. Speaking of combate, where Juliana Pena is uh-huh, a commentator, yeah. have you heard their latest 
main event <laughs> that's mm-hmm. coming up. Alberto Del Rio. Yeah, Alberto Del Rio, who's a very famous Mexican uh, pro wrestler, but has also dabbled in mixed martial arts as uh, at Pride, mostly. Mm-hmm. He was Dos Caras Jr., right? Mm-hmm. He is now fighting. Both guys in their 40s, by the way. They're both going to fight each other at Combate Americas. Am I excited about it? Uh, not really, I guess. But look, that they don't interfere in what those guys are trying to accomplish. Like, no one's losing out on a title shot because of these guys. Uh, so if it brings them some notoriety somewhere along the lines of like what Polly Malinaji just did to Bare Knuckle, helps them put them on the map, then maybe that's just what happens. But, um, dude, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know how to react to it other than to say I'm. I could really almost. <sighs> I mean, I'm. I don't find myself that to, that I will be talking about it much, breaking it down. I'm much, gonna watch it. But when the fight happens, I'll be glued to it because they yeah. earned that by just being the stars that they that they are or were and so to see that one guy's gonna beat the other guy up you know that's where they they tick that click that button on me if you're over 40 and you're gonna come back to a sport that you haven't competed in a long time you probably want to face a guy like tito right i mean at least you hope you can out class him in the stand-up a little bit maybe i mean i I don't know i don't know i don't know where he'll be better i mean everyone's got to guess a Across, you know, a big yeah. right hand or big left hand, depending on your stance. But but uh, I got to believe Tito Ortiz will be the favorite here. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Let's go to a break. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation, Channel 156. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about Tyron Woodley and how he feels about uh, his boy, Ben Askren, losing that matchup versus Jorge Masvidal. Something will surprise you here when we talk about that when we come back.
Boxes are covered with participation awards. They have boxes of gold stars that they purchase themselves. They are the legends and demand your respect. Here are George and Goes. Here's Sirius XM Now when you're out of the car. Now included with your subscription for the first time ever. <laughs> I think I read that wrong. Uh, here, more of what you love. Get more control of how you listen and have more ways to listen anytime or anywhere you want it. Play personalized stations powered by Pandora based on the artists that you love. Just create a username and password and you're ready to start streaming. Learn more at SiriusXM.com slash more. All right. One last little matchup that I left out was Patricio, Patricio Pitbull Frady. He'll be fighting Juan Archuleta. Now, that one's pretty official. And that will, unique, though. that'll be part of the Featherweight Grand Prix. So the champion is in. That's Pitbull. He's a champ champ, remember? And he'll be defending along the way. Now, another thing, though. What's going to happen with Pitbull at 155? Is he just going to relinquish that? Or is he going to say, hey, you all wait till I do this Grand Prix thing? That's the problem. I thought. Maybe it was Eric that said it. But I thought he said he was going to try and figure out. No, I about I seen. Oh. I thought he said he was going to try and figure out how he could do one in between a tournament. Jeez. Hey, good for him if he can pull it off. But, yeah, that's a lot to mess with your body. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is one of the more undersized 55ers, I guess. But good luck to him. You know what I mean? That's, that's still one hell of an accomplishment. To, that's one of their deeper divisions. So to be at the top of that hill and then to also be one of their greatest lightweights ever in Michael Chandler, respect. Okay. Uh, one last thing here, and then we're going to do our daily debate. Tyron Woodley was on the red carpet for the ESPYs, and they asked him. I think it was Mark Ramundi from ESPN MMA. They asked him, hey, man, what would you think of that fight, you know, with Masvidal and Askren? And so he was obviously disappointed. Ben Askren is a teammate of his back when they wrestled in Missouri. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're teammates at Duke Rufus's gym, you know, Rufus Sport. But they're also teammates from their wrestling, their college wrestling days at the University of Missouri. In fact, they're usually in each other's corner, kind of. However, what surprised me goes was that Woodley was in Vegas, but he wasn't at the fight. He didn't even watch the fight. How I, I'm dying to ask him, well, what the hell were you doing? <laughs> that was way more important, you know what I mean? I, I don't remember him being part of the hosting duties or anything like that. I saw Valentina. Uh, I can't remember who else I saw. But whatever it was, it must have been really important because, uh, I mean, those guys are boy boys. Right. And so he found out. He's already checked in with Ben. Ben's doing all right. Now here's another thing, goes. I don't. I'm not trying to just tell a lie for any old reason. But I think if someone asked me that, I'd just go, I was in Vegas. I saw it. It was disappointing. I don't think I could admit to everyone. I saw it on my phone or something. Something, right? dude. Something that no one's going to really be able to check up on. Because even if someone were to go, wait a minute, you were with me. I'd say, no, don't you remember? I went to the restaurant. You could actually pull it off and say, dude, it took five mm -hmm. seconds. I walked away, you know, whatever. and That's all it took. But if I wasn't going to miss my boy's fight. He can act. This is the one time where you could actually say, you know, you pulled it off. I, I couldn't believe he just kind of just admitted that <laughs> to the world because these guys are tight. I mean, yeah. tight, as tight as they get. These are guys that, sh that are so tight, they won't fight each other. When both guys were in the running, when Tyron was the champ and Ben was undefeated in the UFC, there was no talk of them ever fighting. One would just go up another weight class. They were not going to do it. That shocked me. But whatever. But that is... We owe it to Tyron to find out well what was so important, you know. I mean, maybe that was maybe that was just something that we don't know about an emergency. Who knows? Anyway, all right. Now I think it's a good time to hit the daily debate. The brothers Garcia seemingly can't agree on anything. Everybody knows it's duck season, rabbit season, duck season, rabbit season. Whether it's food, less filling, tastes great, less filling, tastes great. Gambling, always bet on black. I like red, black, red, black, red, black, dummy. Or even social media, Instagram, Snapchat, Instagram, Snapchat. The same applies to the biggest stories in MMA. Time for MMA Junkie Radio's daily debate. Today's hashtag. The other debate question for Adam M.A. Junkie Radio. Would you rather see Jorge Mazadal, also known as at Gamebred Fighter, fight for the hashtag UFC welterweight title or fight Conor McGregor next? Uh, I guess it's pretty simple. Goes title shot or McGregor fight. 
I'm going with the McGregor fight. A guy that's been in the sport, that's been doing this for 16 years, I want to see him get paid. Now, it's granted, granted, if he fights for the title, he's probably going to get some of that. But this is something different. It's something that I think a guy like him kind of deserves. I kind of want to see it. I think there'd be a lot of trash talk. It somewhat makes sense. He avoids Askren's a trash I talker, and Jorge didn't really want to get involved in that. Yeah, but Connor doesn't give you another choice. Like He's in your face. Now, granted, that may mean that there's going to be a fight before the fight, so that would be a little scary. But I think it would be fun, man. I really like the idea of it, and it kind of it kind of uh, solves what's going on with Colby Covington a little bit, right? Now you don't have to worry about two friends fighting for a while. Because I don't know if Masvidal would ever fight again if he fought, uh, uh, if he fought Conor McGregor. So you'd say the McGregor fight's bigger for him, or yeah. that's what you'd rather see him that's do? That's what I would rather see him do. I'd rather see him go for the title shot, and I'll tell you why. Why? Because if you go for the title shot, for one, think about what you've just accomplished. Kind of the goal you set out to be, you know, a world champion. Uh, and it seems like he is on the cusp of it. What he did Saturday night was pretty special. He may have leapfrogged uh, Colby Covington. I don't know because that's a decision the UFC makes. But a lot of media and fans feel like that may have happened. Colby Covington has to do something special against Robbie Lawler and maybe get that pole position back. But here's the thing. Look back on Conor McGregor's last six fights. I'm going to tell them to you right here. If we go in reverse order, excluding Floyd Mayweather, we got uh, Habib Nurmagomedov for the lightweight title, Eddie Alvarez for the lightweight title. Then there was two Diaz fights, no title. But before that, there was Jose Aldo and Chad Mendes. The reason he fought Chad Mendes because Jose Aldo got hurt, mm -hmm. but it was still for an interim title. So my point is four of the last six fights – were for gold. Now, the one Diaz fight, the reason he fought Diaz, he was actually going for the lightweight title against Rafael Dos Anjos. Dos Anjos got pulled. Diaz steps in, beats him. Connor was obsessed with getting it back. Now, remember, they also broke records there. 1.5 million, 1.65 million. So I think Connor was like, cha-ching, and avenging the loss. And that fight was at 170. But my point is, Connor gravitates to a title shot. So if you actually win the title, you've done something for yourself. You've paved your own path, you know, your own way towards cementing your legacy. And guess what? You're drawing him to you because he's coming towards that. But he's got to he win. He can't go to Khabib because he just lost to Khabib. No one mm -hmm. wants to see it again. He's not going to go to featherweight because I think he's just too big. I think he's older now. I don't think he wants to cut and go all the way down. Although... There's a path there because he's actually beaten Max Holloway. But he'd have to win a fight to get there. Who? And that has Con Conor McGregor. And that hasn't been happening for him. See, Conor just gets the special treatment. I think the tough task this is... This would be the most Jorge, ridiculous of Jorge treatments. Jorge needs to beat Usman. But if he beats Usman, now he's the guy. He controls the shots. And Conor comes to him. Thereby, he would, all, he would actually get both. But think about... And Connor when he fights Connor, him. he gets pay-per-view oh, buys. Oh, man, So George. now what if they have 2 million pay-per-view buys? He's the champ. He gets pay-per-views. I think if you ask him what he'd rather have, gold or actual gold in the bank, I think he'd say he'd want the money. But if they were to actually do that, give Connor that matchup for the championship without him having to beat someone, I might quit my job. Well, that's where the 165 division comes in. Oh, is that your angle? Oh, no, no. I'm just saying. Uh, I hear you. It would be pretty damn ridiculous. But let's face it. Conor McGregor's career has had – he's caught plenty of breaks. The UFC will bend over backwards to accommodate him because he makes so much money. So if it means creating a new division or just jamming him in there, you know, ahead of everybody else. I mean, think about it. If Colby were to lose to Robbie Lawler – the only other guy that's breathing down Masvidal's neck, I guess, is those guys like Dos Santos, Elizio Dos Santos, uh, Vicente Luque, Santiago Ponzinibbio. No disrespect to those guys. They're like 7-1, and 8-1 and one in the UFC, but they're not Conor McGregor. And so all the other guys, I mean, I guess Tyron too. Tyron, you know, he had a four, def four title defenses, but he hasn't fought yet. So now there's just like there's no big name in his way to maybe getting in there. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the breakdown was pretty close of the votes. Almost 1,500 votes came in. 53% said title shot. 47% said McGregor fight. I didn't think mm. it would be that close. I really thought the McGregor effect, it'd be 90-10 kind of in your favor of the one that you said. Now, 
Here's a couple people that got in on it. At Joet Prosser says, McGregor was a good laugh and personality for a few years, but he's just a bore now. Get on with the title fight, I say. Uh, at Steve's underscore Simpson says, let a brother get paid. Hashtag the resurrection. Hashtag easy money. Shout out to those guys. And there's today's daily debate brought to you by the MMA Junkie Radio Team. How are we looking on the breaks? We still got one more? Or are we on our way to the finish line? How are we looking there, producer guys? Did we you, got did you one ground, guys? break left. One break. I say we take it now. Yeah, let's take it. And then we'll come back and close up shop. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation Channel 156. When we come back, we'll tell you about this being a historical day. That's right. UFC 100 took place pretty much 10 years ago. And uh, goes and I will share some of our memories from that night.
forward slash MMA Junkie. That's our channel. Give us a follow, and that way you'll get an announcement when we are on the air. We will be here for the main card, which includes five fights. Uriah Faber's return versus Ricky Simone. Jermaine D. Randami against Aspen Ladd in the main event. And don't forget, one that's getting overlooked, guys, is Josh Emmett against Mursad Bektik. Uh, now, this is going to be on ESPN+. Plus, and it'll start at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Like we've done in previous uh, Sportscaster broadcasts, we'll probably be in there a fight or two early. Also, don't sleep on Cesar Ferreira versus Marvin Vittori. That should be a good fight, too. That's the opening bout of the main card. Again, ESPN Plus, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that's the main card for UFC on ESPN Plus 13, and that's Saturday. All right, we'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow. Uh, back in 2009 on July 11th, it was also a Saturday. UFC 100 took place. They had 1.6 million pay-per-views. They had two title fights, and it was pretty much just uh, the biggest thing the UFC had ever done. They had two of their big heavyweights going. George St. Pierre defended his belt against Diago Alves, and then Brock Lesnar defended his belt against Frank Mir. That have, that was the in the height of George St. Pierre, right? Yeah. You have to be an idiot to bet against that guy. Uh, I know. <laughs> That's pretty much me. Uh, Dan Henderson defeated Michael Bisping. Uh, iconic punch there. You know, those guys went at it throughout the uh, Ultimate Fighter season, and then Henderson delivered the big H-bomb. John Fitch, Paul Thiago, uh, Yoshihiro Akiyama fought Alan Belcher. And then on the undercard, Mark Coleman, a legend of the game. He fought Stephen Bonner. John Jones, mm -hmm. a future legend of the game. He fought Jake O'Brien. I mean, come on, that sounds silly, right? To go, yeah, yeah, John Jones is on the undercard, but he was. Do, uh, Dong Hyun Kim was on there. Jim Miller was on there. Mac Danzig, C.B. Dalloway, Tom Lawler. Yeah, pretty historical card. What was your biggest takeaway from that whole fight week and the fight itself? It just, when you saw Dana, Lorenzo, Frank Fertitta, they just had this big smile. Like, they just could finally take a, a big, deep breath. Like, MMA has really, really arrived. Like, the whole week in Vegas was, was massive. I remember it was one of the it was one of the first uh, cards where that that swing bout where they actually had a fight after the main event. That was Paulo Thiago and uh, John, John Fitch, Fitch, I believe. Yeah. And then, like you said, yeah, the the beasts that were on the undercard that we didn't even know. But I remember the arena was packed. They had a lot of viewing parties, but Mandalay Bay actually opened up the beach. Yeah. And people were allowed to watch it on the beach. That was pretty cool. Yeah. So I have some great memories from there, and yeah, Goes was kind of joking that I had bet Thiago Alves. Uh, I did, because I just like to bet on underdogs. Uh, felt foolish every single time GSP would just get another takedown, win another round. But, you know, if I'm not mistaken, goes that is the one time I actually got to see Anthony Bourdain in person. We had some shows here in studio, and outside. the Korean Zombie was a <laughs> guest. Was it that week? I believe so. The Korean Zombie was a guest on our show, but he showed up late. And Anthony Bourdain was dating a lady named, I think Octavia Bourdain was her name, who used to, who trained jiu-jitsu at Henzo Gracie's Academy. Mm -hmm. And it got Bourdain to actually become a Brazilian jiu-jitsu pra practitioner. I think he eventually made it to a blue belt. Uh, and we got word that they were hanging out, and the reason was because their favorite fighter was the Korean Zombie. I remember this was very weird at the time. I didn't know who he was, and people kept going. Bourdain, yeah, Anthony Bourdain's outside. Anthony Bourdain. I was like, I don't, I don't know who that is, right? And mm -hmm. so, um, I told that person because they were making such a big deal out of it. I think it might have been Aaron from Texas. I could go tell him to come in for a little bit. Huh? And when he came back, he said, Nah. He goes, He's just kind of like shy. He doesn't doesn't like to do that type of stuff. Oh, really? You did do that? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, I, I, I always regretted that junkie. we didn't do it. But no, I, a junkie did go out and when ask. that's happening, like. Uh, there's just so much going on, and we were running behind. But I remember they really wanted to meet him, and eventually they wound up leaving, and uh, he showed up. Yeah. <laughs> the zombie showed yeah, up. later. Yeah, but uh, it would have been nice to speak to him. Anyway, there you have it. UFC 100 10 years ago today. All right, big thanks to Curtis Miller for his time. Tomorrow we'll be joined by Dan Lambert from American Top Team. And we're also going to have... Uh, Albert Linares, the DJ for the UFC. All right, guys, go out there and be a champion. See you tomorrow.